the death penalty should be an option for the most serious crimes. Oh, I've been getting into the death penalty with some people lately. I, I'm not sure about the death penalty. Uh, it's, I like the idea of it. I do believe that people can commit crimes that are bad enough to lose their ability to live. I think you can lose your right to live. Uh, the issue is that it, it's a little bit too final to kill somebody uh, for committing a crime when we never – we really never know 100 percent that they committed the crime unless they admitted to it. So I suppose as long as somebody admits to doing the crime and they plead guilty to it, then yes, I will say – Definitely uh, the death penalty should be an option as long as they – see, the problem is, is that what, if, if they plead out, they're never going to get the death penalty. The death penalty is only ever on the table when they are – when they're taking it to court and trying to fight the case, so – in a civilized society, one must always have people above to be obeyed and people below to be commanded. There must be a hierarchy. Yeah, yeah, I definitely agree with that. Somebody always has to be a leader, even in smaller things. Uh, Groupthink does not normally work. Um, even in a relationship me and my girlfriend, one of us has to kind of be the decision maker. One of us has to be a little bit more in charge than the other one. Otherwise, we'll be sitting trying to figure out where to go to dinner for three hours every single night until the two of us just go in different directions. So somebody has to have, I guess, the, the final say. Hey, you there? Hello? I can't hear you. Let me check and make sure. There we go. You there? Yes. All right. This is my dad for anybody watching. You got you got anything you disagree with so far? Are you watching? I, I wasn't able to watch. I've been trying to get on all this time. So, sorry. What was it doing? Uh, I would try. I started through Facebook, and then it told me to go to Zoom. So I had to put in IDs and all that kind of stuff. So I'm I'm a little slow. Well, let me go back up to this one. I I'm answering a political quiz, and it's kind of uh, asking if you know all these different questions to kind of fit me into a political uh find out where i am on the political spectrum or whatever where i fit in um and one of the questions is the death penalty should be an option for the most serious crimes do you think the death penalty should be an option well i think the death penalty is, is already definitive it we've got to, to have it as far as i'm concerned or capital crimes meaning uh murder and rape and things like that you've got to you got to have you got to be able to have that as leverage when you're dealing with criminals as well as to purge society of people who are a uh, blight on society that, that shouldn't be here yeah that's, a, that's pretty much what I was saying. I think that you can get to a point to where you lose your right to live. And yeah. it's uh, the only issue I have with the death penalty is that it's a little bit too final. It's a little bit too permanent. Like you can get to a point where you realize somebody's not as guilty as you thought they were. And um, 
you know, we're, we're coming up with all sorts of, sorts of new technology to where we can, um, where we're helping people get out of jail who we thought had raped others or we, who we thought had killed others with, uh, you know, DNA advancements and things like that. And I just think that the death penalty is a little bit too permanent when you can't ever know for a hundred percent sure that somebody did it, you know? Well, I do. I mean, I hear that all the time, but you know, our system of justice is pretty good. It's, uh, it's not a hundred percent, but, uh, you know, men go to war and, uh, they, there's, people that die in the war that that uh, shouldn't die in the war, but they still die. But we still have to have war to protect ourselves. And it's, as far as I'm concerned, the death penalty is protection on society to keep murderers and, and violent people out, get rid of them. So in the same way that people die in a war that, you know, really shouldn't die, uh, but they do. It's just a just a you know part of the price of, of protecting our our society. It's the same same thing with capital punishment. Well, yeah, collateral I, damage. Sure, collateral damage, but isn't putting them in a cell by themselves enough? I mean, I I like I said, I agree that some people forfeit their right to live, but as far as collateral damage goes i think that if my option is to either have some people you know let's say 99 percent of the people are convicted rightly and there is one percent of people who are incorrectly sentenced to death uh i would i would actually elect to just put them away all 100 percent of them put them away in a cell and have have them rot there. The only issue I have with that is I don't like saying, "Oh, well, you committed a crime, so now you get to live for free off of taxpayers, and you get to, um, you know, we get to feed you and house you for the rest of your life." Anybody who's just turned nine, we're taking a political test to see where I end up on the political spectrum. I think it's pretty obvious, but I have some things that cross over, and I'd like to see exactly where I end up. We're taking calls just to kind of go over some of this stuff as I form my ideas of it. And we're on a question right now on whether or not we think the, um, the death penalty is necessary. Uh, and this is my dad on the phone talking to me about the death penalty right now. So, yeah. Well, I also feel, I also, I also feel it's a deterrent. Sure, there are guys that are men, women as well, people who uh, it doesn't deter. They don't care. They they have a come and get me suckers type of an attitude. And uh, but there are plenty of who are going to think t- t- twice, three, four, five times before they com- commit a capital offense if they know for a fact that they're going to lose their life. So uh, the death penalty is supposed to be. It's supposed to be uh, just supposed to be done, quickly and and the penalty is supposed to be done quickly. It's the way it was for years and years, and, years. and of course we got to where we started doing it back in the '60s, and it just got to where it was delayed and delayed and delayed. And so now it's it's not sure and swift punishment anymore. So it's no deterrent. But but then one more thing, and that that. I'm a religious person, and God commanded it. It's uh, it wasn't in the Ten Commandments. It was from no- uh, uh, given to Noah. When the flood ended, God said, "Whoever sheds man's blood, by man shall his blood be shed." So it's part of the new order to keep the world from becoming violent like it did before the flood. And I realize there are plenty of people who are going to scoff at that. You know, it's just a religious coup. But um, it it. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, it's a, a basic rule of having an orderly society. Yeah, I think we have enough empirical evidence to show that, you know, in the 70s and 80s and 90s, the higher the crime rate's gone, the harder we got on crime. And now, 20, 30 years later, crime is 
in a steep decline, especially violent crimes are going down. And so there is proof that hard um, – that harsh punishment does seem to uh, have a curb on crime. But I like the – if you look at California's street, three strikes law, not street strikes, uh, at California's three strikes laws, uh, it didn't do so well. I mean, once people got to the second strike, they all I, I think they were actually more likely to get the third strike if they got the second one than they were to, you know, turn around and live a, a comfortable life uh, with the rest of society. Well, maybe, but I think uh, the deterrent usually was the first strike. <laughs> if a person has, has done it twice, they're already in a pattern. So the third one's real easy. They're, they're, they're in a pattern or an addiction or, you know, they're in with a bad crowd, they're in with a gang or, you know, there's something that's causing them to commit this habitually. But their first time, if they had, if they were smart, they would, that would be the deterrent. So the first time is a deterrent, not the three strikes you're outlaw. Sure. I never liked the three strikes you're outlaw myself. I, 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 I that to me that uh, that takes away the uh, individuality, the the, the uh, inspection of the the uh, offense and giving it a uh, a punishment that fits the crime. To me, that's not a punishment that fits the crime. I mean, it was mostly for violent uh, felonies, though, wasn't it? Like, it wasn't for, like, three misdemeanors or three speeding tickets. Like, these were... No, but it was, it was like, three three possessions. Three, three possessions. Uh, and, and a certain amount of marijuana was considered a felony, and three possessions of marijuana in the year and three strikes and you're out. So yeah. to me, it, it, it was not a wise uh, law. Huh. Okay. Um, all right, so Somebody I'm, started to talk a few minutes ago and I interrupted, so. That was still me. I, you, you and I are the only ones on here. Uh, oh. There's other people watching, just not. Uh, there's not other people on the line. Abstract oh. art that doesn't represent anything shouldn't be considered art at all. <laughs> I wish these th some of these answers had neither agree nor disagree, because some of them I don't agree or disagree. Like I have absolutely no opinion on it, but it, I have to pick. I, I, uh, I have an opinion. I have an opinion. I don't know. I don't know. You know, you may I suspect I always have an opinion on everything, Tom. Okay. Your opinion is formed when another person gives their opinion. You immediately form an opinion. That's that's why your well, last name is Pinion. Okay. I'll say this. Uh -huh. I, in <laughs> art class, I enjoyed doing abstract art. I thought I was good at it. I liked what I created. And so I'll say that I think abstract art is art. Okay. Well... Abstract art can can be good art to a point, to, to me, a point. to a point, to a point. Uh, it is uh, art has different functions. Uh, for one thing, it's to uh, imitate God's creation. That's you know the beauty and, and the and the design of God's creation. That's that's one thing art does, which was you know what the classical artists tried to do when they sculptured, you know, the sculpture of David and so forth, you know, trying to exactly uh, picture what God has done. But uh, starting with Impressionists, art became an expression of, um, well, during the medieval times, art was like it was, it was uh, you know, different colors and different shapes and different things were symbolic. So when you when you look at medieval art, you see symbols and so forth. And, then, and, and But then uh, with Impressionism, um, colors uh, became uh, a way to 
express emotion and, and mood, more, more mood than emotion. And so mood and emotion have become uh, primary. But lately, in the last uh, 40 years, art has become a way of expressing outrage and rebellion and and uh, political Very feelings, cool, yeah. political theater, and uh, you know, putting, making a urine, a, a toilet out of gold, and then uh, inviting people to urinate, and you know, calling the toilet the United States or something like that, calling it the church, not inviting people to urinate on it. Uh, Maple Thorpe was famous for that. So, you know, art has, to me, has been greatly destroyed. That's not art. That That's just political theater. Get back to art. Get back to uh, causing uh, emotion, expressing emotions, uh, using it for symbolism, using it to show God's grand design. But I think we've lost our way. When I was in high school, I actually, I would always screw around with the art stuff. And there was one day where I think his name was Mr. Martin. He told us all to put our hand on the piece of paper and trace our hand. And then he wanted us to draw the hand and like put the, you know, the knuckle lines and everything on the piece of paper. And, you know, I immediately, I sat and watched everybody put their hands on and slowly trace their fingers. And then they put their fingernails you know, drew their fingernails on and everything. And I actually took my pencil and just drew the biggest hand I could to take up the entire sheet of paper. And, uh, and I put knuckles and fingernails and everything on it, but I just made them look crazy. And in the end, the teacher came around and everybody was still working on their stuff. And I just did mine like as sloppily as I, as I could. And he went and picked up the piece of paper and took it in front of the class. And was like, see, guys, this is art. All of you are trying to (laughs) copy what's on your hand, but you're just copying what your creator made you into. This right here, this is art. In all of the class, everybody's like just glaring at me like you are such a jerk. You always do the dumbest stuff. And for some reason, they praise you for it. It was up in the library for a while, like they had my hand posted and everybody would always walk past it on their way into the lunchroom and they'd all shake their heads and be like, dude, how did that get up there? But the teacher actually, he knew I was being sarcastic and he took the sarcasm as an expression of art. So I don't know. Uh, Well, Tom, you were always very, you always uh, were creative. You would always. Uh, see things differently from everybody else so I think you could have been a a great artist still could be who knows but um, you know that's that's your take on things it's your take on things whereas I'm also an artist and I've 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 had uh, my pictures in the in the school uh, uh, library in different places and I've won contests with my art but I'm more classical and uh, try to try to uh look at what what either god created or a man made i used to draw um cars when i was a kid and i tried to make them look like uh they were moving and give them some momentum and like they were coming off the page and i'd sell them and i sold my pictures so it was for me it was an expression of my of what I saw, uh, the the motion that I saw, and other people seem to enjoy that. So, you know, everybody's got their own take on art. But when we use it for uh, to be vulgar, and it's all sexual, or it's all about what what goes on in the bathroom, I think we, we've lost our way. You know, we, we want to elevate men. We don't want to we don't want to drag people into the gutter. We, 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 it's not all about the bedroom or the bathroom. There's, there's, there's so much more to life. I think those things can be artistic. I think that they're just over exaggerated at this point to where people realize going into like the darker sides of their brain is more appealing to some people and they're, they're, uh, 
grasping at it a little bit too much instead of uh, letting something come naturally. Let's see. The business person and the manufacturer are more important than the writer and the artist. 